Welcome back to the Good Morning Naija Show. Today we're going to be looking at event planning. COVID-19 has affected things in ways, more ways than we can imagine. Today we're joined by Oko Ifani and we're going to be exploring the, co the, the, the impact of COVID-19 in the event planning sector. Good to have you Ifani, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. First of all, how are you? Hopeful. That is our, our signature well, question you. on the show because we know that not everybody is doing well mm -hmm. because of COVID-19. And uh, we, we, we're seeing a lot of people, individuals, businesses that have been brought to a standstill because of COVID-19. How would you say that COVID-19 has affected you as a person and you as a business? Firstly, no one saw it coming. It's not like anyone. Imagine planning events and we didn't plan this. No one saw it coming. So when things like this happen, we just be hopeful. Wait, it's a pandemic. Things like this have happened before, so it will definitely pass. So what you do in times like this, you just re-strategize. Hmm. So that's what basically I've been doing. I've been re-strategizing, going back to the drawing board, learning new skills, just trying to cope. You know, looking at it, there are some people who are in this industry, in the event uh, planning industry, and they are looking at uh, probably just opting out and going into something else because it's all about still making that money, still keeping the business running. And knowing that you have a, a business like this, you have staff you need to pay, you know, despite the fact that you're not even doing events. So how... Do, how, how, how does it work in your space at this time, knowing that um, you probably have staff that you've been, you've been working with and you still need to pay salaries? What has been uh, the way out of this situation? Okay, so firstly, usually you don't even get events every day of the week. Event planning is a process, right? For example, say you had a wedding to plan in July. It's a process getting all the different vendors together. Yes. So work doesn't exactly stop. Work doesn't exactly stop. You still have like training processes, training them, your staff and all of that. It doesn't stop. So it's still ongoing. It's just that of obviously money isn't forthcoming at the moment. So, so you look for all that with maybe volunteer or something, but money doesn't come for you continue working still. So you just find a way to cope. Hmm. this period because it's it's tough for everybody hmm. let's talk about you as an event planner and getting into the journey of doing what you're doing today how did it begin for you Oof, okay well i well i started in my university i started planning events bringing um artists to my school um depart departmental dinners and all of that and i found that i really did enjoy it so when I finished school, I decided to work with um, a comedian, and yes, then I started planning events on my own. Hmm. And which is your favorite? Because I know that even as an MC, an MC has the kind of events that you know you would love to host much more than the others. The same way with event planners. What would you say is your strong point or your forte? Wedding shows. Which one? Would I be biased if I say? I think I don't. It's all be. It's all really. I don't know. I do. I didn't really get to choose. Yeah, okay, which one no, do you enjoy planning more? Yeah, which, which one? one is okay. All of it. All of, all it. of it. it. Okay. Yes, it's my no, you... comedy shows, weddings. Yeah. All of it. So, okay, so, which one so, is more stressful? So then? yes, which one is more stressful weddings to put are, together? Weddings definitely. Weddings. I want to say you think a bride is not dramatic until you plan a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> they want the perfect wedding. It, it's no everyone who says, "Oh, it's simple." I'm not a stressful bride. That's the bride who is going to be more stressful. Hmm. You know, everyone wants a perfect wedding, so and it's once in a lifetime. So you have to be. It's definitely a wedding that is more stressful. I'm not a stressful future uh, but bride. I enjoy every bit of it. <laughs> I'm not I'm a sure stressful I'm future good. bride. Now, so did they talk. I'm not I stressed. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if 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 you were to choose one of these kinds of uh, events, which one would you choose? A corporate event, uh, a comedy show, a music show, or a wedding? Which of them would you choose? I would say 
a wedding and a comedy show. Can I just do both? <laughs> a wedding and a comedy show. Comedy shows are fun. Weddings are just magical. So it's hard to choose. I like to laugh. I like humor. And then uh -huh. weddings are just so both. I'm on the fence here. Yeah. Hmm, okay, so okay. you just answered like a politician, but it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You have to pick two of them, it's okay, it's all right. You have okay. to be in this business. You have to be in this business. Even though I feel like the reason why you chose wedding first is that, I don't know, I feel like weddings will pay more than the comedy shows. Or which How one pays more? How do you know? Oh, oh, so that is the reason. Oh, definitely pay more. Oh, that's the main reason, the money uh, yes, that comes was, in. Let's not even honest, I didn't even think I was going to do weddings. I thought I wanted to focus on comedy shows, but... When the weddings that are coming. All the time. And you saw the money, you're like, what? What's going yes, on here? It and, was and, very tempting. And, it's, it's and it was good. It, is it, it's, it's, it's safe to say that the weddings come more than the comedy shows now, so... Yes. To be very honest, yes, because mm. there's the bridal shower, there's the wedding, there's the baby shower. You know, mm. I mean, if you're good with the bridal, the wedding, the whole process, they still come back and ask you to do the baby shower. So, in fact, there's a new and one now that we're adopting. And we're adopting the gender the reveal stuff. style in Nigeria as well. So, yeah, people exactly. are starting to do gender reveals as well. You know, so that's now, wow. now wow, gender reveal style. Yeah, wow. yes, now when your wife is pregnant. <laughs> You want to find out what sex the baby is so made of. You, 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 you will now use reveal. planned events around it. Your creativity will be challenged. If I will come back, when we come back, I'd like you to share with us some of the most uh, complicated last-minute accidents that have happened when you're planning a wedding. Because we all see the outside, but we, we don't know at yet. least we, we are in the we event business too. Yeah. So as a host, you know the madness going on behind the scenes. So we'd like you to share some of these with us in a moment. We'll go on a very quick break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to more with Okoye Fanyi. All right, uh, welcome back to the Good Morning Nigeria show. And we still get our better guest today with us, uh, Oko Ifain. We're going to be having a conversation still on events, uh, planning matters, and still on the situation, how they are surviving in this uh, COVID-19 situation. And we deal with this uh, lovely lady. Madam, okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, so now back to my question. Yes. I had asked you that you were going to share with us some of the last-minute emergencies that happened behind the scenes that we don't get to see, and how were you able to fix it? <laughs> <laughs> so there was this time, <laughs> there was this time, uh, I can't mention the event center. No, so no, no, don't no, have no, to. no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> okay. So the generator wasn't working. Wow. Or it could, just couldn't take all the machines we had. We had very high end ACs and it just wasn't working because it was an open air event. Okay. It didn't work. How was I going to explain to the bride or the groom that the whole place was going to be hot? You know, and the sun was awful that day. I didn't know. They said initially it was going to work, and somehow it just didn't come on. So the whole place was hot before the event started. So we had last minute, we had to start looking for a bigger generator to rent to. But that, that's not the couple's business, Janice, and they want to get in and see that everywhere is okay. Everywhere is okay. It was, maybe, it was maybe an hour to the start of the event. It wasn't funny, but we still through. Wow. Hmm. I can't imagine yes, as a bride. Up. We've already agreed, uh, even though I'm not a problematic no bride. Light. 
are now working. Yeah. I see everybody. You don't say people are only half fun. There's no light. No. Ah. Ha. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> what about the yes. individual chaos that goes on between? So, and now I'm asking this one as an MC, where you're you're hosting a wedding. The bride has told you, I don't want any ceremonial rubbish. In, in fact, I know I remember a particular wedding. The bride specifically told me she didn't want any of the normal ceremonies in weddings because they're a young couple. They had just come back from the U.S. to get married. But then the father comes yeah. and says, and the chairman of the day is my friend, and this is his name, <laughs> Take. Whereas the bride had told you, no chairman of the day. You know, so the bride has her own, her father has her own, her mother has another one. Then there's the mother of the groom and the father of the group, and all this drama going on. Have you experienced that? And when you do experience it, how are you able how to deal with it? That? Yeah. I handle the wedding like that. You, truth is, every everyone has to be happy because everybody has to be happy. The bride, you have to sit down and understand that. Truthfully, it's also your parents too. They have a say in it. You understand? If we're being realistic, especially when you meet them initially and you, they say, okay, we're planning this together. If it's just the bride that you deal with, it's a different case. The parents will just come from nowhere and decide, oh, this is going to happen. And that's where the planning process comes in. You have to sit down and run everything by the bride and try to sort everything out before the day of the wedding. So things like that don't, don't happen. Mm. However, so, making, making everybody happy, you try hard, as hard as possible to convince your bride that at least a minute or two, let's just give to this person. We have absolutely nothing to lose. You know, that's where your expertise comes in, really. Mm. Okay, so so in on a scale of preference now, who would you say comes first? The bride, the groom, the parents? If on, on your scale, in decision <laughs> making, now, in decision making, in decision making, you know, the bride, the groom, or the parents of of either two of them? The who, bride. Who, who will come first? The bride is the owner of the wedding. She's the owner of the yeah. wedding. Yeah. Ah. This is not fair because <laughs> the grooms are... If we're being realistic. Let's be... Hmm, okay. Well, it's all right. So you suck up to her, <laughs> literally. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, because it's her day. You have to make her happy. I don't know that men particularly <laughs> care for these things. I'm not. So I would say most of bride and groom, as opposed to the parents of the bride and groom, unless, of course, the parents and the bride and groom are the ones that hired you. But if it is the bride and groom that hired me, there is nothing. I would play politician for the parents. <laughs> but my, my primary concern are the couple. Exactly. Now, sp speaking about uh, the event planning process, we know that uh, there are a lot of people who had events that were supposed to go on this period. And because of uh, the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of things changed. Now, from your yeah. uh, pro professional side, do you do refunds to people? Or how did you handle situations like this? Seeing that, okay, well, we're supposed to have a, an, uh, an event in, in March or in April, uh, because of coronavirus, it couldn't happen. And they call you up and say, Madam, we want our, our money back, or what's the way forward? How would you usually handle these situations? Yeah, <laughs> that's where contracts come in place. Hmm. We already have contracts from the start that say no refunds whatsoever, because once you pay, we already have started the process. Hmm. So no way you're getting a refund, unless it's my fault, you know, there are rules that guide these things. That you're not, I didn't, I'm not the reason why there's the COVID-19, you know, True. so what usually happens is you advise them to reschedule or postpone their events. Your rescheduling it means you already have a date in mind, but postponing, we're still waiting, trying to see how things turn out. Yes. So you advise them accordingly. That's your job to do, and assure them that everything will be fine and everything will get back to normal. Just put the cards on the table. Explain, oh, this is what can happen. This is what you want to have a virtual event because there's that option as well. You know. But there's no rice. I just want a lot of rice on your words. Either. I'm sure people don't like that. So what I guess if, people would rather that's, wait. That's a problem. What if it wasn't COVID that came in the way, but it was a cancelled wedding mm -hmm. that came in the way? One party decides, I no longer want to oh. go ahead with this. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That, that's what I'm saying. So it depends down, depends on who. For example, mine now, there's, there's certain things that would happen that, okay, you get a partial refund because all my efforts are already started. And I have staff that work with me, so there's maybe a partial refund, but not the total, not the complete um, money. No. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's also talk about, you know, in this season, virtual events. We're seeing a rise 
in the use of virtual events. People are hosting, people are being contracted to host events online, people are planning events online. Have you been able to do that? And what would you say are the modalities you've been able to put in place to achieve this? So I partnered with the Wow Production Company, House of Ajebo. He had a kiddies launch for his YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and it was virtual. It's, it's <laughs> I thought it was going to be so easy. And it's not just the internet, but this and that. But streaming all platforms across, it was was a lot. I was I was shocked. I'm like, so this one too is work, you know? I didn't expect it. So that happened too. So there's that. Sometimes the internet isn't just working and all the platforms at the same time. Sometimes Instagram is working, YouTube isn't working. You know, there's that too. So that one too has its challenges, but it's just not the same thing as a an actual physical event. Mm -mm. I, I mean, if anyone had to choose, I'm sure they would choose the not a virtual one. event, but the physical one, I'm sure. Now, okay, then my question on this part is about the vendors now, because a lot of event planners have, say, you know, they have issues with vendors sometimes. They tell them, oh, yeah, show up at this time, bring this at this time, and things just don't turn out right because of from one factor or the other. How do you uh, operate with your vendors? Do you pay them up front? Do you pay them after the event? How does it work for you? How is the safest way to go about this? with your vendors? So that's a very good question because you'll be surprised what can happen with vendors. Hmm. So again, I do not joke with my contract. I do not. Okay. Because once, in fact, some of them say, I'm not signing the contract and all of that. So you have to, then you're not going to work with me because that's the only way I'm sure that um, we can work True. and you behave. True. You know, some, you already have some that you've been working with. So you know that these ones are capable of delivering but then some others that you're just starting up with, and then your clients might already have their own vendors. And if those ones even mess up, you've never worked with them before, but if they mess up, the client doesn't even care. It's your job, you know? Yes. She's not going to explain to you that um, it's the... You're not going to explain to her rather that it's the... It's the person um, they gave you that's up. acting up, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go on, go on. Okay, yeah. So that's how that's how it works. I have contracts in place for the vendors, mm. and then I pay them a percentage, maybe seventy. And then after the work is done, completed, you get your balance. Mm. Okay. After signing my contract in the beginning. So that I contract mean, is the major. Is like a yes, major uh, binds us situation. Yes. You must sign the contract. Yes. So in must. cases where the vendor says, I ah, don't worry now, you know me now, I'm your person. You know, no, I don't know you. We are not supposed to. <laughs> I don't business is business. It's not the first time we are doing this work. You know me now, that kind of thing. Right? Okay, well, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's been very, you know, uh, insightful talking to you. I just wanted to have a f your, your final um, uh, conversation on this for, you know, event planners who are in this same space that are trying to, you know, p probably stay afloat. What are those things that you would say uh, is keeping you up there afloat right now and how can you encourage them, you know, to still, you know, um, be in this business and still hope for the best? Well, this, this, I mean, I'm sure it has been tedious for everyone. Again, no one saw it coming, so we're all just very hopeful. You know, we're very hopeful. We hope we to end as soon as possible, really. Mm -hmm. But I would say that everyone should stay safe because, I mean, it's only someone who is alive that would be able to plan any event, mm -hmm. you know. So everyone stay safe, show empathy, love also, love mm. one another because it's a very trying time. I mean, help whoever you can help and just be kind, really, and just try. Right now, I mean, if you don't have anything, try to look for things to do. There's like food banks, you know, try to maybe assist them or help however you can. Just do something, keep busy. Learn, relearn, or learn everything you have to do. Just improve on yourself. Mm -hmm. Go back to the drawing board. If you've done events before, see what you can do better. You know, just keep grow, grow, keep growing. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. have take some courses if you can. You know, I'm sure there's a way, mm -hmm. and there's light at the end of every tunnel. Of course, I mean, these things have happened before, and they will pass. So, all right, be hopeful. 
All right, thank you very much, Okoy Fine, for having this conversation with us. And I believe that uh, a lot of people who are watching this, they've you know, been able to take one or two away from the conversation. Right. Thank you very much <laughs> for your time. Thank you very much for thank your time. You. And uh, we're hoping that uh, in this period, we'll still see the light at the end of the tunnel and hoping that we will yes. go back to normal where everybody can still, you know, come back together, have great events and, you know, have a good time.